Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Tricia Gordon, and I'm facilitating the call today. Um, before we get started with our main speaker, we have a couple of items. Uh, I wanted to check in and see if anyone has any project updates or announcements. Um, hi, Tricia. Yeah, I do. This is Neil. Okay. Gradebook NG is now in master, um, which is pretty exciting. And there'll be an uh, announcement. I'll be sending an announcement out on behalf of the Gradebook NG team uh, probably after this meeting. Um, one of the things to be aware of, there's a couple of a couple of features they're still working on, and that will be included in the announcements, so the parts that aren't complete yet. Also, we're doing an experiment where we're using GitHub uh, for the issue tracking instead of JIRA, just for the Gradebook NG project. So as folks you know, mm -hmm. find issues, um, we're just trying it out for a couple months, seeing how it works and um, how it compares to JIRA. Uh, so, That'll be coming coming out, and then I think we're probably going to be we're talking about a freeze day a freeze day for the scope of Sakai 11 now. Um, tentatively, we're kind of thinking January 2nd, 3rd, but there hasn't been a proposal yet. So a freeze date. All the major features are in Sakai 11 now, so the freeze date is really more for if somebody was working on a, you know some um, smaller features they wanted to get in before before the cutoff. Um, so that's that's kind of where things stand with Sakai 11. Interesting about the GitHub, especially. Well, and congratulations to anybody on the call who's been working on that. Or um, and I know we're all in, excited to check it out and dive. And yeah, it's available. Uh, it's available on nightly for if anyone wants to go and take a look. You can go on the nightly servers and, and try it out. Just be aware that we're also, the gradebook is still there. So when you're setting up your site, there'll be a gradebook and a gradebook NG. So if you want to tr try gradebook NG, you'll have to pick that one specifically. So I'm sorry, what was the date for the code freeze that you mentioned? Um, well, tentatively, like I said, it hasn't been uh, finalized, but we're kind of thinking code freeze around basically the first of the year, 2016, right, at, right, you know, right after New Year's. Is what we're thinking mm -hmm. about, but but that's going to be an open discussion. Um, I'll you know I'm getting some initial we're getting initial feedback from core team and PMC, and then we'll ask for developer feedback to see if that works for the oh, okay. you know developer community. Um, so it's not it's not firm yet, and we're thinking probably we're going to cut the Sakai 11 branch at Sakai Camp in late January. And um, oh boy, yeah. <laughs> So that's another announcement right there about the unconference um, on the 24th, 25th, and 26th of January. That sounds right. I'm just curious um, if folks on the call can comment in the chat if they are planning to go to the unconference. Awesome. So, quite a few. Great. So, uh, at least we'll have some familiar faces. That's good. Oh, great, Laura. <laughs> I know, I thought so too, that it was going to be only for developers. And, um, and now that we're going to be there, that's no longer true. <laughs> Yay! Yes, exactly. Yeah. <coughs> That's like lots of people on the call are going. That's really great. Wow. Even from Murcia. Murcia. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, anybody else have any announcements? Anything else going on? Okay, um, so I have a JIRA of the week, and I uh, don't think it's actually been discussed by this group before. Hold on, I'm going to copy and paste the URL into the chat here for us. So this JIRA has to do with the syllabus tool not providing a student view to instructors.
And Dave, I'm not sure if your comment is in reference to the JIRA we're about to talk about or about the Sakai camp. Oh. Yeah, so in Sakai 10, this is an instructor, a view for the instructor to see um, what the students see that they can switch to. So if you want to look at the JIRA, um, So it's really, uh, I put a comment in there from, I actually created the JIRA. So um, the there is still the option to view your site as a student and, and view it that way. So it's really not a showstopper, but it is different from the way the syllabus tool used to have a student view for the instructor to, to check. The introduction of a discussion uh, about uh, a JIRA for the syllabus tool does bring into play a larger question. I don't know how many other people might be thinking this, but ever since we started using lessons more here at Notre Dame, I've been thinking how, um, how much older uh, syllabus looks than lessons. And, uh, and that if we didn't have the syllabus tool or we, we stealth it, we hide it, perhaps uh, faculty who are already using lessons will find that they could create a lesson named syllabus and use it um, just as effectively without having to uh, have intimate knowledge, <laughs> sorry about that, uh, deep knowledge of a, of a secondary tool. Mm -hmm. Yes, agree because uh, lessons do 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 the same that that syllabus do and, and more, and there are, there has no sense to to maintain syllabus here. I think. Yeah, so that that's a really good question, Laura, and um, yeah, there. There's, there's certainly a lot to consider uh, given all the functionality and uh, development of the lessons tool. Um, it's pretty robust and it can really serve the purpose of a syllabus tool. Um, more functionality to be. So does anybody hide the syllabus tool um, or stealth it rather so that it that you don't even use it? We at University of Lleida we, we hide it uh, but uh, because we, we use the a custom tool that is based on competences for the European European context and 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 we use this this other tool, it's an, an LTI tool. And the other, we 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 don't use it. Can you um, in the chat there, Alex? Can you um, tell us what the name of the LTI tool is that you use? No, oh, it's it's a custom made uh, for from us. It has no name. It's... Oh, I see. I gotcha. Yeah. And and so you have done an LTI integration of that tool. Yeah. I see. No, Jane, you're, you're pretty close to going ahead and stealthing it. Um, and Marthia uses a custom tool. And Marshall, y'all are thinking of. So interesting. So that's, that's actually an interesting um, sort of exposure of what people are actually thinking and doing and do we need to continue to put developer time into the syllabus tool if folks are think, are pretty much abandoning it.
Well, I guess it's a conversation we could continue. I, you know, I, I, it's obviously going to be an 11, right, Neil? It's already there, I'm sure. Yeah, there's no, no plans to deprecate the syllabus tool for 11. Okay. But maybe it's a conversation that the um, PMC, is that the name of that group? Yeah, the Sakai PMC, but I think this seems like really a community, you know, thing to uh -huh. me because, um, yeah. you know, the PMC would want to know, does the communities think that we don't really need the syllabus tool anymore? I think they'd be, you know, I think that they would probably be okay with that, you know, um, and, but what does that mean? So I don't know what the, what the conversation uh -huh. would be for the PMC. It seems, yeah. So one of the things that, at the University of Virginia, we have customized the syllabus tool so that instructors can present a, um, a link to their syllabus in our SIS. Um, so we've done some integration between the two to accomplish that, and I'm not sure, you know, how easily that could be done in lessons, it would be something we would have, that is a piece of functionality that we would not want to give up. Uh, it's pretty oh, yeah. important. Um, so, so Trisha, more, yeah. mm -hmm. to clarify, you're saying that your student information system has a link in it that when clicked opens up the course site and the syllabus in the course site? It actually just opens up the syllabus from that course site. So the and syllabus only, by default is added in a public way? Actually, not by default, but we have an option of an access option that we've added um, to, if, if a syllabus item is set to world readable, it will present a link in the in the student information system and then that link just opens a single page to just the syllabus not the rest of the site right that sounds brilliant um and of course you uh all faculty upload their syllabus as pdfs then correct well either well they they might use a word doc they might use a pdf they might do inline just in the editor of the information they want to share in the sys so yeah any anything yeah so you know i don't know if you guys want to see that sometime um yes uh dave the syllabus is coming to the sys from our sakai well, it's actually not coming to the SIS, just a link to it is is being automatically automag added to the course page in the student information system. Right, so it is something that we, we developed here at the University of Virginia. Um, yep, yep. It is intriguing. And, you know, the conversation around lessons versus syllabus makes me wonder if we shouldn't explore trying to get that functionality into lessons um, or just continue with what we've got with syllabus. So if we do, then, of course, we wouldn't want to deprecate syllabus. <laughs> we wouldn't. <laughs> so. I mean, it would be a really short demo for me to do that for you guys sometime if you're interested to show you. Yeah, and we'd also love it if you shared the code with the community. Yeah, we could we could definitely do that. You know, the reason um, I think that we chose not to was simply because it's custom to our sys, and you know, not everybody uses the same. But, you know, it could be um, possibly modified to work with other. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, right. It would uh, be a starting place for some someone. Really, what we do is we just pull out the link and send that as a file to our sys. And then on the sys side, they take those and put them on, you know, each one 
map it to the right course page in the SIS, so it's just a link that they provide. It's a push from Sakai. Sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we can definitely um, contribute that back, and I'll do a short demo of it in one of the upcoming meetings, and we can, um, we'll be talking about scheduling some of those in the near future, so. Um, well, I suppose that. I suppose the takeaway from this discussion here is a is a perhaps Neil taking something um, back uh, with a recommendation maybe from this group that we consider uh, deprecating syllabus in in favor of lessons or uh, at least perhaps take a wider vote. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it, it, it's, it also just opens up the notion that people might just want to stealth it, in, even if we don't deprecate it, um, because um, syllabus does provide so much functionality that the syllabus also provides. And as Salwa points out, those who want to use due dates um, and send those to the calendar can, um, you know, that is one thing in syllabus that lessons also doesn't offer. Yeah, and I'll just, mm -hmm, go ahead, sorry. No, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, in terms of me taking something, I'm not really sure where I would take it to, because again, I think that it sounds like a community conversation. Um, Mm -hmm. And it sounds like this is the beginning of a community conversation to me. And so I think, you know, it could be on the list and it could be at Sakai Camp. It could be at Open Aperio. It could be, you know, I think that, yep. that, that it needs to have the, you know, the PMC tries to, my, my perception of the PMC, you know, as the governance group for us is that they're as hands off as possible. They prefer the sort of the duocracy idea, right? That the community mm -hmm. kind of figures out what they need and what they want to do. And if it's a major change, like, oh, we want a stealth, um, you know, syllabus or we want to, you know, then yeah, definitely it needs to go by them sort of final, you know, a final review and to think about what the implications are and think about the community and that sort of thing. But I think that's my perception is, is things are mostly bottom up driven. Um, so it's not like I would take this to the PMC. I mean, I could take it to the PMC in terms of saying what's their initial reaction, but I think that it would it, they're they're not as much a representative of the community as as you know as the larger like yeah. lists are of Sakai user and Sakai dev and the people who are actually using stuff. So that's kind gotcha. of my my. Gotcha. So I don't know if it matters or not, Neil. If you want to just mention that it's a conversation that's come up in the community and might be seeing more conversations around that. Just a heads up kind of thing. But that is totally I off. Which I do every time we speak about 20 minutes into the session, so right on target. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, you know, so we, we didn't really answer the question about the syllabus student view in the syllabus, and that's fine. Um, I, it got us started talking about a, actually a more, much more interesting thing, um, and we've, we've probably spent enough time on this and should move on um, and introduce our speaker, Alex, who is one of the Aperio Fellows, and he's going to be um, talking to us about some of the um, internationalization community work and the work of the Spanish-speaking universities and institutions. So, Alex, I'm going to give you pre presenter privileges and uh, there. Oops, no, I nope. gave it to Adam. No. All right, there you go. Okay, I will try to upload uh, presentation first. Wait a second. Sure. Your time. Okay, upload. It's on the way. Okay, we can see it. Perfect. 
Okay, so let's just start with the presentation. Uh, I have to to warn you that the presentation is not too long, so would be fine. Whatever you want to do, stir me during the presentation or start a discussion at any point. Uh, and also, I'm not specially focused in any SK area, so I decided to show to show you uh, a mix of things, like like you say, yeah, mm -hmm. about internationalization uh, uh, as to your work. So, uh, start. Let's start with with my my institution let me let me do a brief introduction uh, i work in the it service of the university of Lleida. that it's in a small public university in catalonia and it's in the northeast of spain and here we have two official languages that are catalan and spanish but uh, we also give support in English in order to make easier to foreign students access to, to our services. So actually, we run Sakai in, in three, three languages. Now we, we are running Sakai 10.3. We have around 26,000 sites created and a million and a half of resources uploaded. And our instance of Sakai, it's maintained by the development area of the IT service where I work. We were, we were four developers here, and, but we just uh, give a portion of time in, in maintaining. We, we are proud to say that we, <laughs> we have been involved in Sakai from the beginning. We were the first institution to run Sakai on September 2004. And before Sakai, we were running WebCD. And then we started the immigration process to, to open source. And the LMS was one of our main goals. We, we didn't start deeply with Sakai. We started with a pilot of, of coursework from the University of Stanford. And then, during the pilot, then Chef and Kuzwur joined it to create Sakai. And we quickly moved forward in that direction. So, we started first time, we translated to Catalan and ran it. But you can imagine how difficult it was. Uh, translating, translating all the text from source code. And we were really scared about repeating it in every new version. So, we started an internationalization effort with the help of University of Michigan. We, we moved all written text to bundle files to let people translate it easily. That, that uh, later helped us to, to reduce the efforts made in every upgrade process. And what are, what are we doing now? Well. We are a development area, and obviously, we develop solutions for our university. But there is also some complementary work, uh, like uh, giving support to our Sakai users, maintain the service up and healthy, Apache, Tomcat. Uh, also, we prepare and fill the LMS with the official data, courses, sections, roles, uh, people, you know, everything. Uh, I really like the next that that is helped Sakai project to find and resolve bugs. It's funny, but not easy for us because it's it's hard to reserve time every week to participate. Mostly, mostly because uh, sometimes it's not obvious for direction board the benefits of doing it. But we try hard. And the last, we are who manage the translation to Catalan. <clears throat> We concentrate the effort during the string freeze period, and we usually work one or two people full time on that. Looking a bit, a little bit closer to the development, we use Sakai as our development framework for most of tools we did. We uh, we understand Sakai not not just like an LMS. We use it uh, as a platform to recreate real campus into a virtual environment. So 
we have a big set of custom tools inside, but you you can't imagine that. tons of uh, of tools. But now uh, we are focused in, on the institution mobile app mobile application. It's not a Sakai application, but we integrated uh, the notifications feature. Those are generated by by the Sakai announcements tool, and teachers can choose if they wanted to notify to the application or not. Now, now we are testing it, and we want it to go on production in the first quarter of the, of the next year. For us, uh, the technical support is the less attractive, but uh, it should be done. And for that, uh, we opted to create our own help center based on WordPress plat platform. We did it because it's easy for us to maintain our customized help in three languages using a platform like, like that, instead of using the official help. We are feeding uh, little by little and focusing on adding frequently, frequently added questions that usually are about accounting or enrollment questions. And so, what can I say about this? I'm sure you you deeply know what is uh, what it is, what it is, and how funny could it be. But hard at the same time. The process has different phases, and some of them require help of the community. Uh, we find bugs in our local instances or in the QA. It's first. Later, we open it Jira, Tiras. Sometimes we had the chance to resolve it, uh, sometimes not. But if there is a solution, it must be tested. And it's better for all if if we can if it can be done by people who didn't develop it. And once everything looks fine, it's time to ask for merging into the main code and it's done again. It never ends. But how I said, it's hard to be done alone. So community, for me, the community is the key for doing all, all the work. But sometimes it's it's difficult to work coordinated with big communities, big communities like, like Sakai, for many reasons. And time zone, different priorities, maybe also language. So, so here we had our particular solution that it's the AS to you, the Spanish Sakai users. That it's uh, just a small subgroup of the Sakai community that fits, fits perfect uh, to, to our needs. And that group. It's a group of users from Spain that uh, includes universities and companies. And we work together in Profit of Sakai. And, and do we do and do we act in as unique team with weekly meetings, uh, coordinated tasks, development life cycle? So let me let me show a little bit on how, how we are doing things. We usually meet on Wednesday like you, uh, for an hour, and we move similar how Sakai Core team do, or, or you do. We use Etherpad to follow the sessions points and write notes, and we use Blue White as the communication platform. I, I, must, I must confirm that the Blue White is my, my other passion. It's a peer-to-peer -peer conferencing platform that I did with Juan Homero and Edu Rey, and that that they are also members of the Sakai community, and it works it works nice for us because uh, we can feed the the other part inside the platform, and you don't have to move it between windows or tabs. It's more comfortable for us. Uh, anyway. Every week we discuss a set of Jira's that are ordered and grouped using labels, and we handle and we handle them depending on the what's needed uh, to be done in, in every moment, and following that life cycle that it's in the in the right. Uh, in the weekly sessions, we usually follow this order. We have uh, new Jira's that. Mm, 
there are the new discovery bugs or features that somebody wants to introduce to the STU. We tag them with the STU call. We have also the Jura's in progress. That set includes the big resolution and actions related in testing in the ES2U servers by, by other members. Those users have uh, the tag STU work. And uh, that tag does not mean that we have the, the attribution of the resolution. I want to clarify that. It, it could be that we just include it into the test in a local QA instance. So maybe you have a, a Jira that you resolve it and, and see that tag. That is because uh, as to use interested in that in that in that Jira. Uh, and finally, we have presented Jiras. That stage starts when the solution is pasted and the QA process and developer create the, the pull request. Then we follow the state of this pull request. Uh, its inclusion and verification in daily servers. So, uh, along all these states, we are using other levels to know what action is needed to do. For instance, uh, I can see it's difficult to see in the in the, uh, the graphic, but we have S two U employee branch to is used to announce to the test infrastructure manager to deploy a branch into Sakai trunk instance or as to you QA to indicate that must be tested. Uh, all the uh, all the Jira spending to test or verify are distributed during the call. Everyone takes the work that can afford during that week. So uh, everybody acts as volunteer. Another task we, we centralized is the localization. As to you takes care about the general Spanish translation. We use Transifix as the tool to handle string translation. Before before Transifix, we, we used crowding, but some issues detected in the automatic upload process make us to change to this platform. Sakai Japanese team show it show it, it and invite to, to use it. And now we at uh, University of Yeda and UBNA are also using to do the Catalan and Basque translation. Every meeting, we spend some time in the Spanish translation and the verification. Uh, so it arrived to the to the string freeze period already completed, not like the Catalan that we wait until the string freeze. And by the other hand, we have the internationalization. That's a little bit more complex. In the past, STU was mainly focused on resolving internationalization bugs, but uh, we are not playing that role now. Maybe because the most of cases and issues about this has been resolved, uh, but there are still things to be done here. Uh, things that that are already resolved, or, or I think that are mostly resolved, are the text string translation. They are not text in the source code. It seems obvious, but it has been some years to to achieve, to achieve this goal. And every language has its own files. The text sorting, the ordered list, usually are sorted depending uh, on locale preferences. Uh, you know, uh, letters with accents have different weights in, in, in some languages. The text direction, there are mechanisms to render the information in different directions, left to right, right to left. I, I don't know if there is vertical solution or, or even if it's decided at the moment. We have also the user life as preference that can, can be used by by the users to change the default, the, the, the custom language. Time zone handling, users can see the terms, dates, uh, periods, depending on the time zone they are living. The site language choice, the sites can be displayed in other languages. 
instead the user preferences. Uh, also, we have uh, format and preferences in the time, things like day, month, year, order in the in the date representation, or AM, PM, or 20, 20, 20, 24 hours format, the first day of the week. Uh, more things, numeral systems, especially in decimal halving, commas, dots, and evaluation scales. Depending on the country, we are using different ways to grade. Uh, could be letters, points, percentage. So all of this, it's, it's achieved in my, in my opinion. But there are another things that that's still not, like uh, choosing the language preference in on the on the in the account creation. Users should choose the language on the registration or, uh, or the first time they are entering the platform. That that would be especially useful when handling when you are handling with clusters that have particip participants from different countries. In our case, the default language is Catalan, and foreign users have difficulties to change it in preferences. Uh, we have the content translation. Uh, nowadays, we have translated all the static part of Sakai, you know, uh, portal tools, but but we don't have the mechanism to elaborate content in different languages. I'm not talking of lessons content or resource just 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 them i'm also talking about role names resource met metadata assignment or test uh, test descriptions other platforms like cms uh, have this feature already consolidated but we are in my opinion we are facing problems to bring it to sakai maybe maybe it's because the model maybe it's not an important feature for sakai community maybe too big i don't know In some cases, in some cases, we we found gender translation issues. Uh, there are some cases we find terms in English that are neutral, but in other in other languages have variants. Uh, as example, here I have the instruction we have in English it's uh, instruction, and in Spanish it's professor for male and professora for female. That in some cases uh, that's causing some complaints and and not always is it's not always easy to find a neutral way to to translate it and i'm sure that there are others that i have no idea but, and you are welcome to to expose them and just to finish I want to tell you that we are also starting uh, the teaching and learning initiative in the S2U. In the last Spanish Sake conference made in, made in November, we decided to, to try to get Spanish teachers involved. And we will try to give them 15 minutes in, in each call to bring questions, discuss JIRAs, or whatever they find important from this general teaching and learning session. So I understand that more and more you'll see representation of F2, S2U in this course. And also we will be happy if uh, there are people from, from this group that speak Spanish and join us and help to, to start it, this process. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. That was really interesting. Thank you so much. Um, and I don't know if you have been tracking the comments in the chat during while you were talking. Probably not. Um, no, I know I that <laughs> many of us are really grateful for your work on the internationalization. That is huge. Um, and such a, it's just such a major effort. Um, and so thank you to you and others um, who have been working on, on you're, you're welcome. Um, so I'm going to invite others to come on the mic or in the chat. We've got a couple of questions in the chat that I'll come back to. Um, but first, I'd like to invite anyone who has their mic and able to come on and ask questions or type them into chat. 
<clears throat> so um, this is Neil. My question, Alex, is of the things that aren't done yet for internationalization, um, what do you, which one do you think is has the biggest impact, like is the most important? Well, I think the, the one with biggest impact would be the, the, the harder to implement that it's the the content creation, it's about content creation, because uh, we can offer in the same, we, we will be able to offer the the content to in the in the same site to different users, and I think that that will help to those institutions that that are maintaining uh, currently several languages at the same time. And in your case, we, in some way, we are doing in some tools because, uh, like like the syllabus tool that we we were discussing before. In this case, we we are already offering the the content of the of the syllabus in in different languages, and teacher can can elaborate the content in those languages and it's done because uh, all this information uh, then can be can be public and offer it to all the world and it's difficult for uh, for us to to arrive to people if the information is only in catalan or or, or spanish so I think that that for this kind of institutions have the uh, different content in different languages would be would be very very nice. So uh, this is Krisha again, Alex. Uh, I have a question about your notification tool it, that you guys developed. I think, and uh, you had a screenshot of it in one of your slides. Yeah. Um, and and really, I'm I'm curious to know if you would come back and demo that and the competency-based syllabus tool that you guys developed. Um, well, uh, also, <laughs> I can. It's it's difficult to to do a demo because it's running in a in in devices, but but I can oh, I, I can try. Gotcha. Um, are those tools <clears throat> something that that are that you guys are making available to others to use? <laughs> yes, uh, the we are developing two pieces. Uh, wait a minute, I, I will show you the URL. Okay. The project is in GitHub. Uh, here, okay. I paste in the chat. And oh, if you, okay, great. And if you look here, you'll find the mobile app UDL and mobile backend. These are okay. the, the main the main pieces and Happy if we can help anybody to to build their own app, and okay. more happy if you help to build us as <laughs> our okay. uh, application. That's great. Thank you. Um, let's see what else have we got in the chat here. Um, and yeah, your Lewis, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that tool, is very interesting as, as Neil noted. Neil, what was your question about WordPress? What was that related to? Oh, I was noticing that Alex uh, mentioned the online help that you uh, that you manage, and it's. I thought I heard you say that you do your own online help. You manage it in WordPress. I thought. Yes, we we built in in a WordPress because uh, we had a mistake 
we in the 27429 we translated all the help in Catalan but you know that later in the 29 to 10 uh, the the help was uh, was redone from the scratch so we 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 lose all the all the translation all the work we did and we decided to to move with other platforms to to try not being attached to the main project because it's very hard to 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 do documentation about some some parts of Sakai using using the tools of or what Sakai offers and WordPress fits very well because it's easy to to write documentation to put images uh, slides so it works very very well that's very interesting makes sense um, thanks and Mariano has just posted um, a comment in the chat about the date formatting and a, and a link to a JIRA, especially useful for non-US Sakai users. So the JIRA number is SAC 23662 uh, for the recording. And uh, Yeah, so, um, so this, um, this Jira, it's about the implementation of the date picker in in well in all Sakai tools, but right. there 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 are some tools that are still uh, that still need to be um, still need some work, I believe. Um, there's I actually... agree with you. I definitely agree with you about the date picker. Um... Yeah, this is. Sorry, go yeah, ahead. go ahead. I was gonna say that this is great for consistency, so this will be helpful for any Sakai user. Right. But it is right. also really important for for IT and environments because uh, um, we get, for example, instructors that they don't know how to uh, how the PM and AM work because we just. Actually, for me, you know, I, now I'm used to it, but at first it, I, I must agree that it was really, really hard for me um, because we're just used uh, to 24 hours format. So it's just something that, you, yeah, now it's really simple, but uh, mm -hmm. before it was, you don't know if 12 p.m. <laughs> is uh, noon or if it's midnight. You never know right. that. <laughs> so. Right. <laughs> um. And just about the date picker, the other concern that I have is, um, does it meet accessibility requirements um, in addition to being consistent for all Sakai users? It's also a consideration. Hmm. Hmm. I, th I, think, I think this date picker had already considered some accessibility. I think somehow it passed the the blessing of the accessibility uh, working group. I believe. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I, I think sure. maybe Neil or anyone else can. Yeah. 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 yeah I remember, I remember coming up uh, as an issue on accessibility. It's been a while, so I assume if it was uh, if it was an issue, we'd be hearing more about it. Uh, and certainly, was we're going through the the Raleigh project, uh, which I guess is an announcement that. Uh, you know, that staff project is moving along. They're in the process of um, picking a vendor, which should be any day now. Um, okay. well, I'm like, <laughs> um, yeah, it's you you sounded a little shaky there, Neil. It was it was hard to understand you, but <laughs> it sounded like you were saying yes, they're looking at it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Alex, thank you so much for joining us. Does anybody have any other questions for Alex before we move on? Okay, well, um, again, thank you for, for um, giving us 
some more information about what you guys are working on. It's very impressive, and we're very grateful. A pleasure. So we are going to move on and talk about um, scheduling future meetings. And I would like to invite everyone. I'm going to paste the Etherpad link in to to come over to Etherpad um, and look at the upcoming schedule and some of the unscheduled topics. Um, we have no topic scheduled for next Wednesday, for example, and um, all of January's meetings are wide open except for the last one. So I wondered if we could start filling in some um, topics for these meetings. Anybody willing to volunteer or um, volunteer to reach out to someone? So Dave has posted a question in the chat. Has anyone looked at what the transition to 11 will look like from 10? So uh, what do you mean by that, Dave? That's a big, big question. Um, the usual way we do um, transitions is uh, is that uh, you know we do the we have uh, of course the upgrade and uh, and technical specifications and what are required for um, for installing the particular version what the technical dependencies are and we'll usually have database scripts um, there may be and of course release notes so those are the components I can think of that are usually involved in an upgrade I'm not sure if that is kind of what you're talking about. Oh, how will it, your courses look and behave? Oh, I see. Yeah. It does. It's a really good question, and I think we all have to um, definitely take a look and explore that for our, ourselves. And, you know, um, it would be interesting if anybody as people migrate to 11, um, the early adopters might be willing to come and, and give us some idea of what that looked like for them. Yeah, the look, of, the look and feel of Sakai 11 and, uh, you know, uh, Mariano, actually, if you get involved, so one, one advantage of getting involved in QA testing, among many advantages, is that you get an early view of the changes that are coming and what tools are really changing and how much the interface is really changing and, you know, what, how that will work for your institution. Um, and Mariano uh, is going to mention that in a couple minutes here, uh, talking again about the testing that's going on right now for Morpheus. Um, well, will early adopters be upgrading to 11? Well, I've heard from several, yes, I've heard of several institutions now, three institutions that have indicated to me uh, I'm not sure if they want to make it broadly public, so I won't mention the particular names, but I've heard from three institutions that are planning to upgrade like around May, June of two, you know, two, next year, 2016. So, um, so that's really interesting. It looks like there are at least several institutions that, that want, and we're going to have a lot of work to do to get, to get there. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I, I want to speak back to Adam's suggestion about uh, using OAE um, and teaching and learning. And that is, we do have that listed on our unscheduled topics. And is there anyone on the call involved with OAE that we might? Um, I I am. This is Mariano. Oh. I yeah. <laughs> I am, and I was <laughs> going to offer myself for next Wednesday if if there is nothing. Oh. I could try to do a brief uh, introduction about what um, I've actually I've done this talk for a couple of times. So I did it in open up. I wasn't there, but I did it, uh, through web conference. So I we basically use it for an online master program, which I'm like the technical support for that for that program. So we we are using it as a wiki uh, kind of thing to um, yeah, so I could talk about that definitely for like 20 minutes or so. And oh, that would so, be fantastic. Show you some examples. Um, um, yeah, I could do that. 
Wonderful. Thank you. I have put you on the agenda for next Wednesday. So, <coughs> thanks very much. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, so, folks, into January, anybody have any um, uh, suggestions for early January? Uh, just to give us a couple of um, topics in a row so that we are covered for the next couple of meetings. Well, one thing, I just have an idea. Tell me if you think if it's a good idea or not is, um, this is Neil. Uh, am, I, am I sounding okay? You sound great. Okay. Um, I wonder if this group would enjoy uh, kind of providing questions or feedback for the Sakai, um, the Sakai camp. So that they can say, hey, you know, if you talk about all this stuff, well, you know, have you thought about the X, Y, or Z? <clears throat> like as input for the uh, Yeah. Let's do it. You want to do that January 6th? Sure. Okay, let me make sure I note this correctly. So, um, ideas for the Sakai camp. Questions. Yeah. Is that right? Like, yeah, exactly. Questions people oh, have, questions. ideas, have, okay. topics, oh, yeah, anything, that would, anything that they would be interested in okay. in terms of what might go on at Sakai Camp and input they might want to give to the Sakai Camp participants, and then we can just use that as input. You know, uh, it'll be interesting to know what, what this group you know is thinking. Great. So uh, let's see, we've got some other suggestions. Let me make sure I'm not missing any. And if I do, please rechat them. Um, there's a suggestion Adam and Dave are interested in loading in university pictures into Sakai profiles. Anybody in willing to? Like Forrest dropped off. Oh, it, oh, Stephen. So yeah, Matt Burgess said he thought he remembered you guys were going to do that. So let's get you back on the agenda. Are you willing? Are you the one who is willing to do that, Stephen? Not you, but someone who works with you. Yeah, sorry about that, Stephen. That's embarrassing and not not good. We dropped the ball on that. Okay, so um, do you know if they might be available on the 13th or the 20th of January? Or do you want to check with them and get back to uh, any of us, Neil or me or Matt? Yeah, that would give them a little more time. Okay, I'm going to pencil it in for the 13th and um, let us know if that does not work for them. But otherwise, and, and also if you could tell us who, that, who is actually going to be presenting so we can have their names. Wake Forest. I'm just going to put Wake Forest for now. Great, thank you. Okay, well, you know what? We are at uh, the top of the hour, so um, I'm going to suggest that we go ahead and adjourn. We've got some topics for uh, the next several meetings or the next few meetings. So thank you, everybody, for your suggestions. And I and I know we probably missed some from the chat, and I'll try to capture those and put it put them in our list of unscheduled topics. Um, so we'll have them for next time to talk about. Uh, anybody have anything else they want to say real quick before we move on? Or before we adjourn? 
Yeah, just for one second. So the Morpheus tool by tool uh, is still ongoing and, and the focus this week is lesson builder, resources and site info. And I encourage everyone to take a look at the conference page and all the information is there. And if you need or if you have any questions, please uh, ask us because we will be really happy to answer them. <laughs> so that's wonderful. It. Thank you. Okay, well, thanks everybody and especially to Alex for being our presenter today. Really appreciate it and good talking to you all. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.
You are currently the only person in this conference.